Hi, my name is Ben Whitaker. I'm Professor of Chemical Physics at the University of Leeds. I've been asked to explain how a time-of-flight mass spectrometer works. Let's just review what mass spectrometry is about. Mass spectrometry gives us information about the elemental composition of molecules and their structure. It does this by first ionizing a molecule, often with a beam of electrons, but you could also use a pulse of ultraviolet light, and then separating the ions produced according to their charge-to-mass ratio. There are essentially two ways to do this, either by using an electric or a magnetic field. In a traditional mass spectrometer, a large electromagnet is used to deflect a beam of ions. By changing the current in the coils of the magnet, ions with different charge-to-mass ratio can be steered through the instrument to record the mass spectrum. With powerful magnets, very high resolution can be achieved, which allows one to study very high molecular weight molecules, such as biological polymers, proteins, and sugars. But there are also disadvantages. The ions are recorded mass by mass as the magnetic field is tuned, which means that it can take a long time to record the spectrum. And to achieve high mass resolution, narrow slits have to be employed, which reduces the throughput of ions. The machines are also pretty big, often several meters long, and expensive. There are other ways of employing magnetic fields to separate ions of different masses, and nowadays you are unlikely to see a magnetic sector instrument in a chemistry laboratory. The other way to build a mass spectrometer is to use an electric field to, to accelerate and separate the ions. And this is what is done in a time-of-flight mass spectrometer. To explain how it works, imagine two conducting plates in a vacuum separated by distance d. If we apply a voltage to one of the plates, we will create an electric field. Now imagine that we create a positive ion somewhere in between the two plates, say by directing a fast beam of electrons through a very dilute sample of gas phase molecules between the two plates. The potential energy of the ion is equal to its charge, Q, times the strength of the electric field at the point where it was created. That's SE. Because there is a field gradient between the two plates, and because charges, like charges, repel one another, the ion will feel a force that pushes it towards the grounded plate. 